Here's something I haven't done for uh, many, many years. Uh, more years than I care to remember. This is a kit from Banggood for making uh, a power supply, 0 to 30 volts and uh, up to uh, 3 amps. And nice kit of, of parts there. And I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of fun making that. The background to this project is the possibly the last one of these that I made. Uh, is this guy. Now this is the Amtron kit, uh, UK 677, and uh, I actually have found a catalogue online from 1978. Uh, so, uh, as I say, I haven't done this for some time. Now, I originally thought I would gut this thing and salvage the the transformer and and use that for the for the new kit but um i just can't bring myself to do it <laughs> the uh it's been a, it's been with me for too long so uh, we're going to have a completely new build so let's take a a closer look at what we get Very nice looking PCB. Um, I'm impressed with the with the quality. All the parts here. Oh, it does take me back. Maplin, where are you now? Uh, so, yeah, I'm just uh, having a, a rummage through. All the parts look to be good good quality parts. Uh, capacitor there. Rated uh, 105 C, so that's a that's a good sign. So I'm not going to bore you by uh, watching my shaky hands solder this together, but uh, we're going to do that now, and we'll come back and and go on to the next phase. As suggested in the manual, which uh, is referenced from the from the Banggood page. Uh, the first step is to install the resistors and the diodes. Uh, the resistors are all good quality 1% uh, with the 5 band uh, colour code which is not so familiar to, to many people so always a good idea to check the values with a, with a multimeter. Uh, diodes fairly straightforward, uh, just a caution there. Um, the 1N4148s and the 5.1 volt Zener uh, are, are both physically the same size and very very similar. Um, fortunately on the bands there are four of the 4148s and only two of the 5V1s uh, so you can you can just uh, go by that. Otherwise you need a magnifying glass. For my uh, DC power supply project uh, using this kit from Banggood, uh, what we're going to need to do is to mount this uh, power transistor uh, on on there. But we're going to need it's very clear in the instructions to uh, have some sort of heatsink for it, preferably with a with a fan. There is a connector on the board for a 24 volt fan. I don't have any 24 volt fans, but we'll we'll overcome that later. So what I have is uh, from a, a very old computer, probably an 8086 uh, or something like that, um, a, power, uh, a heat sink which is exactly the right size to, uh, to locate with the board and to put the power transistor on. Uh, all I have to do is to modify this to, to tap a hole in it for the, for the screw that's going to attach the, uh, the, the power transistor. So for that I'm going to use a, a new toy. Uh, and again from Banggood, um, a good uh, tap holder and this one uh, is unique for me, uh, it actually has a little ratchet device which will make it a lot easier uh, when starting off the thread so we'll, we'll see how that works. So now we've done the final component uh, assembly, well, almost final apart from the, the main power transistor and a few things to note there. Um, all of the uh, ICs are the same. The only thing to uh, make sure of is that the pin 1 marking 
um, is uh, lined up on the, on the board there. So that's all good. Um, the smaller transistors, uh, you do need to be a little bit careful. They're not the same. This one here is a 9014 and this one is a 9015. So just make sure that you've identified those correctly. Um, the capacitors, they're identified by the, the negative side. So the, the obvious negative side of the capacitor goes to the stripey um, part on the, on the circuit board. You can't see it now too clearly because obviously I've put the component in, but the, the negative is identified by the stripes there. So that's very good. And uh, last but not least, the, the small little LED. Uh, just remember that the long lead, there's, there's one long lead on the LED, and that's the, the positive side, which is identified on the, on the circuit board. Uh, this device here is, is mounted, and I've put a little bit of the thermal compound on that, and everything else uh, is good to go. Uh, quite happy with my soldering. I was taught to solder many, many years ago by a, a lovely lady from from Plessy, uh, Gwen. And uh, if you're still about Gwen, uh, you'd be pleased by the uh, the result there. I think. Uh, so I've had cleaned that off um, just uh, with the the usual um, IPA isopropanol. Back in the day, uh, used to clean stuff up with uh, with trike, uh, trichloroethylene, uh, which I think is now probably banned, carcinogen, and even uh, carbon tet, carbon tetrachloride, uh, which was a another great substance. I don't think that solvent abuse is uh, is a modern thing. Anyway, so the last thing that we have to do is to mount the the main power transistor here. And I did find in uh, my box of bits a very old, um, it's probably an 8186 uh, CPU cooler, CPU cooler it says. And uh, I've just tapped a hole in, in there to take the screw. And it does say in the instructions that uh, we need to isolate the transistor from the heatsink. I don't think that's a, a huge deal, but... Uh, Happen to have one of these little mica insulators from back in the day, and again, just putting that on with a dab of the thermal compound. So just on there. Same on the transistor. Don't have to go mad with this stuff. So, bring that guy up on there. Just tighten that down. Excellent. So now we're in a position to be able to mount that on the on the board and get that soldered in. Here's the completed circuit ready to test, wired up to its uh, transformer. Uh, I've got the the heatsink and the other components in place. The instructions say to turn the the voltage pot, which is this guy on the right, uh, fully counterclockwise uh, to zero it. And then we need to adjust this potentiometer here so, so that the output voltage is zero. Uh, so let's plug it in. Okay, so we have a small uh, DC offset which we need to zero by trimming this potentiometer. See, it's gone slightly negative now, so let's tweak that the other way. Okay. 
OK. So we have zero on the offset now. And if we turn the voltage potentiometer up, we can see the voltage cranking up there to the full 31 volts. And just rotating it back to zero. So that's the first part of the calibration done. The final part of the calibration is for the current limit. The current limit is, is indicated by the LED coming on. And to calibrate that, we need to put a 10 ohm resistor across the output, making sure that it has sufficient power capabilities. This is a 5 watt uh, 10 ohm, uh, because obviously we're going to be passing some, some current through it. Uh, to start this test, we turn the, the voltage potentiometer all the way down and the current potentiometer all the way up, so that's fully clockwise. We then gradually raise the voltage until we get to 1 volt. It's a little bit fine on the adjustment here. You can change this potentiometer for one of the multi-turn ones for finer uh, calibration. But So here, now how we are at, uh, at 1 volt more or less. So what we need to do now is to turn the current potentiometer counterclockwise and to the point where the LED comes on. There it is. So with the LED on we know then that at that point there it is now current limiting and we can see that the voltage decreases. And if we turn the current up, we get to our one volt. So we know that at this point, the current is now limited to one volt at 10 ohms, which is 0.1 of an amp. So uh, what you can do there is to obviously go up in different voltages uh, until you get to the 30 volts maximum at three amps, and then the current uh, will be set accordingly. But this, this resistor doesn't have sufficient uh, wattage to be able to do that. Um, you could obviously calibrate a, a dial, but I'm going to be using this with uh, a voltage and current meter, so uh, that's not so much of a problem to me. But we can see that the current limit uh, is, is working. So the device is, uh, is good to be put in its uh, enclosure. This is the current and voltage meter that I'm going to be using in conjunction with this uh, power supply. And it needs, uh, it needs a voltage to, to power it. Um, it'll work quite happily off of 12 volts, which is handy because we also need 12 volts for this, the fan. The fan that uh, I recovered from uh, an old computer to cool this power supply. So where are we going to get 12 volts from? Um, they provided uh, a handy fan 24 volt uh, output, but um, that's no use to us. Thankfully, I have uh, used many of these in the past. This is a little uh, D-Sun 3 amp, believe it or not, uh, regulator board. And it couldn't get much simpler in and out. Uh, the input voltage uh, can go up to, I think, 28 volts. And then you have this little tiny uh, potentiometer here to set the output voltage to whatever you desire. Obviously it's got to be uh, a lower voltage than the input voltage. This is only a step down converter. Um, so we'll wire this up and set the output to 12 volts for our, our fan and for the uh, volt and amp meter. And now finally everything is, is working. If you remember the current uh, control that we, we tested before with the 10 ohm resistor. We set the output to, to 1 volt and at the moment it's uh, 150 milliamps so it should current limit at 0.1 of an amp. So if we turn the current limit down you can see that the light is indicated to make you know that it's in constant current mode now and that the, the voltage is just about one. So 
I guess that's the tolerance on the, on the resistor we're looking at there. And it doesn't matter if I turn the, uh, the, the voltage control right up now, it's current limited at the 0.1 amps. And also if I turn it right down, it goes to zero and then gradually tracks up. So it's current limited at the moment to 120 milliamps. So again, if we increase the current, tweak up the voltage. So if we go to 10 volts, current limit should come in at an, at an amp. So it's, it's not terribly accurate but uh, it's good enough for the for the needs which we need. So 9.9 .9 volts, 1.35 1 amps and as we turn the current limit down just coming in there at uh, just below 10 volts. Excellent, so now I can build it all into the enclosure and uh, I'll give you a final overview of it uh, when it's in the box. Uh, here we are inside the unit. Uh, don't worry, it is, uh, it is unplugged. So here we have the obviously the main transformer sitting in the bottom of the unit here. That'll keep it stabilised. I chose this sort of form factor as uh, Real estate is uh, somewhat at a premium on my uh, on my bench. Um, the main circuit board that we saw and the uh, little heat sink up on the left there is the uh, little uh, buck regulator that's taking the 24 volts down to 12 for the volt and amp meter and also for the for the fan itself. So that's quite a neat uh, little layout, I think. Um, just see here on the back of the unit, the volt and amp meter, the uh, LED for the constant current, uh, current limit mode, and uh, the wiring for the output terminals, and obviously for the, uh, the volts and volts and amps control. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I think it's a really neat uh, kit. I haven't built anything for uh, uh, an awful long time. Um, so it was um, quite an experience. Um, certainly the quality of the kit um, rivals that of uh, folks like Hellman and uh, I wouldn't hesitate to, to, to recommend it. It's a, a neat project. And uh, so the, the one that replaced uh, from 1978, oh, that's uh, been, been working well for, for 38 years. Uh, I hope that this will work for 38 years. Um, <laughs> I certainly won't be around to see that, but uh, on that sobering note, cheerio.